This is the third video in my series of testing solar thermal panels versus solar PV. This video is going to be about hooking up the solar electric. And man, what a day for it. The sun is solar noon right now. It's bright and sunny. I'll bet we're making thousands of watts. We're probably boiling that 55 gallon drum. Let's go check. Wait a second. 9 amps? 13 volts? That's like 125 watts. What's going on? What did I do wrong? This video is all about matching solar PV panels to the heating element. And I gotta say, I learned the hard way because when I first set up this experiment, I screwed it all up. I had to phone a friend. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> but now I'm gonna share with you guys what I learned. When I first set up this experiment, I set up two PV panels in series with each other so we'd get almost 80 volts. So right here you can see 9.6 amps. That's about the max the panels can put out. But our voltage should be way up at like 80 volts, but we're not there. We're only down here at 13. It's really interesting that the voltage gets squished down so much. Let's look at the panels. Right here we got the main negative wire and it comes down and this main negative wire actually comes down and, and ties to the heating element. Now the positive wire comes over here and ties in series to the second panel, which is right here. And then the second panel comes off as the main positive going to the heating element. So they are in series, positive to negative. That means that the voltages should be adding. But we're not. We're way low. Now let me pull this apart and show you what happens if we just have one panel connected. Check it out. One panel, and we're pretty much producing exactly the same as we were with two panels. But that means that one panel is way more efficient. Okay, now let's try three panels in series. We should be getting real high voltage, almost at 120 volts with three in series. All right, one, two, three. All in series, positive to negative. What's that? It's the same output. But that means this combination is even less efficient. I can't believe this hasn't changed with three panels. You would think that three panels would be, more would be more powerful, but it's not. When I set up this experiment, I bought a 48 volt heating element that was rated for 1500 watts. Each of these solar panels is 365 watts, and that's at about uh, 38 volts. So I thought, well, 38 volts is less than 48 volts for the heating element, so I'll connect two panels in series to get my voltage higher than the heating element is required. That's what I thought I had to do. And I gotta say, that's completely wrong. And I've learned quite a bit since the first day that we set this up. Now the one that I found works best for my setup and these panels is three panels in parallel. Go figure. In order to parallel the panels together, I bought four of these Y connectors. Now these are nifty little guys, but they max out at 30 amps, so make sure you don't exceed that, and I'm right there at the limit. Uh, but I bought four of them, two are positive and two are negative, and this is how I can combine up to three panels in parallel with each other, and it's nice and easy, quick snap together connections. So up here is one lead coming down from my uh, top panel and I'll go and connect this up I'll throw a second connector on the first Y connector and over here is my wire that used to lead into the combiner box but I pulled it out of the combiner box and brought it over to the heating element so this wire makes a little roundabout but it goes directly to the heating element And now all three panels have their positives tied together. We just have to do that same thing for the negatives. So now we'll have one output and one, two, three inputs.
And now this is the main wire that used to go to the combiner box and now goes directly into the heating element. Isn't that beautiful? 900 watts. That's awesome. This is 25.3 amps, 35.6 volts. So 900 watts going into the heating element. I'll show you guys the setup. I just cover it with this piece of uh, EPDM rubber. It's down in there. Some of you guys have actually done this for your whole houses. And uh, this is nothing new for you. You, you already knew the answers. Uh, but hey, I had to figure it out for myself. Uh, one of those guys is actually Edwin Miller, and I'll leave his contact below, but he made this awesome setup with six panels up on the roof going down to a water heating element uh, in his tank, and that's how he handles all of his hot water in his off-grid home. So thanks a lot for sharing that, Edwin. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about why this is. Well, the heating element is going to have a resistance to it. Now the resistance is measured in ohms with this little Greek symbol that I have it turned to right there. I've got the wires hooked up to my heating element and it is 1.5 ohms. Because I struggled so much with trying to figure this out, I decided to try to make it easier for anybody else who wants to try to do this same type of thing. I created an Excel spreadsheet that is a calculator so you can punch in your volts MP and your amps MP, which will be listed as I, and it's right on the back of the solar panel. There's a little data plate. Punch that into the calculator, and it will give you a suggested heating element that will match that combination of panels that you have. I put that into an Excel spreadsheet and left it on my website completely for free. Here's my website, davidpaz.com. I have a few pictures and different things, but honestly, I'm not that great with uh, websites and computers, so don't expect much from this. I just threw the calculator right here on the home page in an, in an Excel document. Go ahead and click that, and it opens up as a download, and here we go. We're going to open the Excel sheet. Uh, there's probably a lot better ways to do this, but I don't know them. Uh, I'm sorry about that. So once I enable editing, it's, uh, it's kind of small for you guys to see this. So I'm going to adjust the zoom here to 200% just so that it shows up better on the video. And my instructions are to fill in the yellow cells. So these four cells are what you, the user, have to fill in. We need to get the information from the sticker on the back of the solar panels. The, the, this sticker here is my actual LG solar panels in the backyard. And we have 38.9 volts, so let's go ahead and stick that in. 38.9. And for our amps, let's look back. That's IMPP, and that's 9.39. 9.39. What this stands for is volts at maximum power point, or IMPP, which is your amps at maximum power point. Then you have to look at your number of... Uh, in series and your number of parallel strings. So the current setup that I have is three panels in parallel. So it's going to be one uh, panel per string and three in parallel. So we have three panels total. We have our total volts, our total amps. Now this is important to keep in mind when you're going to size your wire. Uh, at least for me what I did was I took my amps and then I multiplied it by 1.56 which allowed um, for over irradiance and for continuous duty. But you're going to want to consult your own code and stuff for that. It's outside the realm of this particular calculator, but I just threw it in there so that you'd have the information right on hand. I added 25% for the safety margin uh, on top because I don't want the element burning up from too many watts. And then uh, we'll, we'll scroll down here, and I have two dozen heating elements that you can choose from. And I also put in a wrench and an adapter kit. And I put in this, uh, this note here from Amazon, because all of these links are Amazon links. So I will get a kickback if you go ahead and use one of these, which I appreciate if you do. 
Now this 48 volt, 1500 watt element is the only one that pops up, and this is the uh, as good, and this is the actual element that I purchased. How do you uh, how do you click on this? Yeah, there we go. I think that is that going to open. I tried to make these hyperlinks, but like I said, I uh, I'm not very good with computers, guys. So sorry about that. And it opens up, and you can see that I bought this heating element for thirty-two dollars. It's a 48 volt. It actually looks like uh, two heating elements that are together. So, yeah. So that's the actual heating element that I have. Now, had I uh, had a calculator or fully understood this stuff in advance, what I could have done was use the exact same number of panels, but I could have gone three series, one per string, and that would have saved me from having to buy those Y adapters. Uh, and also, as we scroll down, remember this is exact same watts, but now that 48 volt one disappeared. It's not an option anymore. Now it gives me these three as options for being good. But this one here, this 4,500 watt, 240 volt element, I can pick that up at any local store. They all carry it. They're all between 10 and $20. This is a normal off-the-shelf heating element. So I could have saved some money on the Y connectors. I could have saved some money on the heating element itself if I known about the ohms and trying to match up the resistance in advance. So here you go, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, one other thing, I did put in a range uh, to get you kind of your closest match, but I'm gonna go ahead and set up another experiment that I'll be starting in the future where I compare these three heating elements side by side with each other. That way I can fine tune the formula, which is up here. Uh, once I can fine tune this formula, I can give you guys a better match. Um, and so that'll be upcoming videos. Uh, so this right now is calculator version one, and I will make a calculator version two. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Some of you were asking about the square footage. The three PV panels are 64 square feet total, and the one thermal collector is 32 square feet total. When I put together the final uh, video about the data, I'll be normalizing for that.